So J&B Blended Scotch Whiskey released a commercial, not in U.S. markets. I believe it's in uh, Spanish markets, maybe some others. Certainly not the U.S., because here it would cause a problem, and we need to talk about it. Commercial opens with the J&B logo. Then we cut to a sort of montage of an old man going about his life. You know, he steals a tube of lipstick. What is this old man doing? What's the reason behind it? He begins experimenting in secret with different looks, studying fashion magazines, different palettes, looking for something that seems right, something that makes him happy. And we're not really sure what we're looking at here. Is this old man discovering something about himself late in life? Is he experimenting? Whatever it is, there's no harm in it. All we do know is that it doesn't have a goddamn thing to do with blended scotch whiskey. After a bit of trial and error, he is serving up a fierce fucking look. There's still so many questions, though. Like, what is this about? What does it have to do with blended scotch whiskey? It's interesting, certainly. Kind of like a short film. And then this feeling grows in the pit of my stomach because I remember the last commercial I watched that was sort of like a short film. Maybe you do, too. Gillette's We Believe, the best a man can be ad. 2019. If you don't remember the ad I'm talking about, it was essentially a short film commissioned by Procter & Gamble showing several instances of toxically masculine behavior and men calling those issues out, working to address the generational traumas and make sure that our sons are better men than our fathers were. You wouldn't think that would really be a controversial take, but holy shit did conservatives lose their mind fucking flushing razors down the toilet and just all sort of temperamental baby shit. It was bad. It was a boycott. Estimates put Procter & Gamble's losses that quarter at like $5 billion. The CEO came out and said that it was a hit worth taking because of the social responsibility. Getting the message out. Men could be better than they were. And men responded to that by bitching about it on Tucker Carlson and complaining about the woke Procter and Gamble agenda. Well, getting on social media and being like, I encourage my boys to beat the shit out of each other because that's man behavior. Fuck you and your razors. I'm a badass lone wolf alpha and I'll do shit I heard about in no commercial. You know, despite the billions of dollars of ad revenue annually that indicates to the contrary. Sure, man. And all of this over the suggestion that men could be doing a better job. What a wacky idea. Anyway, we've wandered off the topic. Back to this J&B ad. Old man's checking out the window, car pulls up, and we're introduced to our only named character, Alvaro. He's 26. He's arrived here at what we assume is Grandpa's house, along with several other family members for some sort of big get-together. Holiday vibes all around. Well, Grandpa gives Alvaro the secret nod, and they head back to the other room, where Grandpa puts to work all the makeup tricks that he's been developing in secret for who fucking knows how long. It's a beautiful moment, actually, as this grandfather shows support and recognition. It's a touching moment of intergenerational bonding and honesty. And it's a problem because the conservative mind isn't going to see it that way. They see and believe only what they want to see and believe. And what they will see is fucking grooming. They will see an old man slapping makeup onto a young man. And there's no way you can convince them any different because they don't operate on the same level of reality as everyone else. And then we come back into the room where the rest of the family is dining. The grandfather returns and where Alvaro was, we get another text card that simply says, Anna. 26 years old. And the family, after a moment of silence, accepts this development with the sort of love and support that any one of us would be lucky to have. Many of us, too many of us, can only dream of it. And it's a beautiful moment. It's a fucking touching human moment in a J&B ad. 
And holy shit, is it going to be a problem if Tucker Carlson ever gets his hands on it. Ad ends with a message about the magic not being in the holidays. The magic is inside of us. And that's nice. It's a nice ad. And a glimpse into a world it would be wonderful to live in. But that's not the one we live in. And that's not how this ad will be taken by the American right. Because people like Tucker can't finish the fucking thought. They see something like this and they think to themselves, oh, this is just the woke left trying to push their trans agenda on my children. No, it isn't. The commercial is, as it always has been, trying to push blended scotch whiskey. That's what it wants you to buy. And it's doing it by trying to convince them that they share core beliefs by appealing to the values of its customers in order to extract money from them. Because that's all corporations care about. They don't care about anything besides your wallet. They don't care about anything besides brand loyalty. To make sure that you never buy anything else from anyone else ever. Because visibility for these marginalized groups is growing, support for these groups more vocally expressed by a majority of people, that's who they're going to market to. Sell everything to everyone. It wants the largest customer base possible. The problem is capitalism. The real question you should be asking, Tucker, is not whether the liberal elites have a trans agenda for your children. The question is, if even such a manly fucking drink as J&B blended scotch whiskey is moving towards a stance of open trans acceptance, maybe you and your shitty ideas are on the way out. We can argue all day about the evils of corporations showing support for marginalized groups through marketing while doing irreparable harm to those groups and more just out of sight over there where we can't see it. But that's a problem we'll have to address later. First, we need to address your deliberate misunderstanding of how things work. Because you, your Fox News cronies, and every fucking politician in the GOP's current strategy of keeping Mama and Papa terrified to go to bed every night for the great replacement that's going to happen or that the kids will wake up gay is on its way out. Conservatives may hate to admit it. They're in the minority. Society has moved beyond their tired ass 1950s ideal of America that never existed. Those people are going, Tucker. You're going with them. You have no policy positions to support. You have no plan for the future. All you've got is bitching about commercials. And it's so prevalent that now I'm here bitching about you bitching about commercials. It could actually serve as a pretty good example of horseshoe theory, but I'm sure you don't know what that is. I tell you what you could do, though. Get on some of that frozen dinner money that you're sitting on. Maybe rebrand the company strictly for conservatives. Call it bullet gun frozen dinners. Except you won't do that. Right, Tuck? Because that shrinks your market share. And if you're not making money, how are you going to convince the rest of the evangelicals that God loves you more? It certainly wouldn't be through all the good work you do. I mean, they might appreciate all the fear-mongering you do every night on TV, but if you don't have that high score in an offshore account, they don't give a shit. Long story short, it was a good commercial in which a corporation once again virtue signals values that a corporation can't possibly have in order to extract money from its customers. And another reason for conservatives to lose their fucking minds about stuff they don't understand. Like they did with Gillette and that Nike ad with Kaepernick and fucking Keurig. I look forward to all the social media posts of busted bottles of J&B Scotch whiskey, proud patriots pouring the shit out off their back porch, promising never buy this woke liberal shit ever again. Just between you and me, I kind of hope they miss the commercial entirely. After all, it's got Spanish text. Can't be fucked to try to read that. The lesson of history is that they're not going to listen to anything anyone says. We're just going to ignore them till they stop complaining till the next commercial comes along. And the cycle repeats. That's what we're going to get. It's what we always get. Because we live in hell world. Any hint of change. People have pissed 
and moaned and shit their diaper. You live in hell world. And everything happens over and over and over again. Hell world. We make incremental progress towards a better world and we just listen to the same bullshit talking points on loop. I've already had this entire conversation in my head. I really don't want to have it again. Hell world. Well, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening. This was fun to make. I haven't, I haven't done this in a while, so uh, I, I appreciate it, honestly. Hell world or no. Love and solidarity to all of you, always. And remember, there's no politician in the United States farther left than center right. And the world is what we make it. So we might as well start trying to make it better. I love y'all. No corporation is your friend. Stochastic terrorism and right-wing extremist violence are both on the rise. We are all going to die in climate crisis. Welcome to Hell World. All major credit cards accepted at the gift shop. Maybe try the J&B Scotch Whiskey.